Okay, so a few days ago, I got this mysterious package from Fruel. I know it's some lenses, but that's pretty much all I know. So let's roll the intro and unpack it together. Okay, so we have a nice box. Now I think we can just cut through here. And now for the big reveal, let's pull this out. So we have the world first versatile magnetic VND. So that's variable and D. And they also have a few insights. So they also have a CPL filter, mist filter, variable ND and mist filter. So yeah, a lot of things to test out. So now let's open this second box. Open this up. Ooh. Okay. Then we have a nice little pack. So if we come here and open this. Oh, this is nice. This is really nice. So they have everything nicely organized inside of here. And yeah, so I'm gonna actually gonna have to try it out. Let's start by talking about how this system works. So right now on my DSLR, I have an old variable ND from Freewell on my camera that I bought last summer with my money. And the problem with this filter is that you have to unscrew it to be able to take some pictures. And then I have to screw it back on to continue taking some video. So this is just very annoying when I'm on a trip or something like that to always have to screw it and unscrew it all the time and to be able to take photos and video at the same time. Now with this new system from Freewell, all you have to do is put the adapter right here. And once the adapter is on your camera, you actually don't have to put it and remove it anymore because everything is working with magnets from now on. Now let's talk about how to set up your VND filter. So the first thing you wanna take out is your VND base. So it's written at the bottom right here. And then you wanna make sure to align both Freewell logos on side of the adapter and the filter here and simply drop it and the magnets are going to make sure that everything is perfectly aligned. The next thing you need to decide is whether you're going to use the 225 and the filter or the 629. So 225 is great when you don't have too much light, uh, but a 629 is great for a day like right now where it's a full uh, sunny day. So two very important things when you're putting on the filter is first of all to make sure that the 629 or 225 indication is actually facing outwards of the camera. So when you put it on, it needs to be outwards. And the second thing is to make sure that when you put the lens on that you align right here you have a little a on the filter and a little a on the adapter so you want to make sure that these two are perfectly aligned because this can allow to have some hard stops on the variable nd to make sure you don't go too far and get some weird artifacts in the end when turning around the filter if you don't know what are VNDs, they stand for Variable ND Filters and they're basically like sunglasses but for your camera. And the variable means that you can actually simply turn around here the ND to get different strength of ND without having to remove the ND from your camera. The reason why you would want to use this is actually to get some natural motion blur uh, inside a video or to get some long exposures for photography. But I think that the best reason to use ND filters is actually for the blurry backgrounds when you're taking videos like right now for a vlog to get a nice blurry background by using a wide aperture like 2.8 like I'm using right now on my DSLR. Okay, so now let's go test these out and see how they actually perform in a lot of sun right here to see if they're good or not in reality. I just had time to review these footage from these ND filters and overall, I'm very satisfied with the results. So first of all, if we look at uh, the sharpness, there's no loss of sharpness. Just remember that my Canon DSLR is only 1080p, so we're not getting 4K footage that is much sharper. Then if you look at a small problem, we have that the color cast is a little bit more on the warm side, but that's not a huge problem because you can simply bring down the color temperature inside of your editing program, and it's a pretty easy fix. What is a little bit more of a problem is the vignetting. So from one to four stops, and also five and six stops, there isn't a problem at all. You barely don't see it at all that the vignetting is there. But once you get to five stops or eight and nine stops, it's very visible. So if you're gonna be using it more at these extremes, you're gonna get a lot more vignettings inside of the corners. So that's definitely something to keep in mind if you wanna have a nice even image. But just remember that all ND filters, or at least all variable ND filters, 
always have a color cast and lots of vignetting. It's impossible to make one that is perfect, but overall, it's not a huge problem. It's pretty similar to the other ND filters I used in the past. Now let's talk about why this filter kit can be really useful if you're doing more photography. The first thing you might not be thinking about is that you can use ND filters to make people disappear inside of your shots. So this is really great if you're in a setting like right now where I am with people passing all around and you just want to make them blurry and less distracting in your photos. This is a really great trick when you're taking pictures of touristy spots to get some much more interesting photos in the end. Another reason why to use ND filters is for when you're taking water to get super smooth water, especially when you're taking waterfalls. The last reason why this filter kit is really great for photography is because of its CPL filter that allows to get more green and blue inside of the shots, which is really useful when taking pictures of landscape uh, for landscape photography. Now let's talk about why this system is so great. If you want to be switching between your ND and CPL filter, all you have to do is take off this ND filter, flip it around, put it on top, and now you have your circular polarizer. And now you can turn it around and get different strength of polarizing. This also brings me to the biggest down point of the system and is that if you want to use multiple filters one on top of the other, you can. So you cannot use your six to nine stop filter on top of your CPL filter. But that's also why on the second side of the second filter, you have a ND32 and CPL filter. ND32 is about five stops of ND. So it's still good for most cases when you need some CPL and also ND filter, but it's not variable in the end for the ND and the CPL filter at the same time. If you're not sure what are CPL filters, CPL stands for cross-polarizing linear filter. And this is a fancy way of saying that it can do two things. The first one is that it can use it to remove reflections inside of objects. So whether you're taking a picture through a window, taking pictures of photo frames, taking pictures of a car, this filter can help remove annoying reflections. The second really great thing of a CPL filter is it allows to get more colors and more saturation inside of the green and blue colors of your photo, which is really great when taking pictures of, let's say, flowers or when you're taking any landscape photos where you really want to have some rich green and blue tones inside of the summertime. So this is why you would use a CPL filter and you can use it both for photos and also videos. Now let's talk about the performance of the CPL filters. So they both work pretty well, but I would say that the one without the ND filter works much better overall. This one still works pretty well, but it's not as much of an effect than this one where you don't get as saturated colors or as much of the reduction of the reflections inside of the windows or whatever you're taking a picture of. Okay, so now let's talk about the last type of filter, and this is the VND Mist Filter. So for this one, we're actually gonna remove everything we have on uh, our camera right now. So we're gonna remove the ND filter. We're also gonna remove the VND Base Filter. And we're gonna take our second base filter right here, the VND Mist Base Filter, and we're gonna place it on the camera just like the other one. And once it's clipped in, we're good to go. So now we have our mist filter on. Now, if we want to add some ND to this, we can simply take our ND filters and put it on like we did for the other ones. So now we have our VND mist filter ready to go. I personally never really use some mist filters, uh, but I'm definitely going to be trying it out tonight with some light. So the mist filter is going to allow to get a very soft and ethereal looking light. So a lot of people like it because it makes the image look a little bit less digital and a bit more natural. So that's definitely a plus of using a mist filter. But it's also very much when you want to get some artistic effect inside of your image, we're going to be using these types of filter. So I'm going to sh uh, shoot some videos of the sunset because we're going to see that when shooting directly in the sun, instead of getting this very harsh light, it's actually going to diffuse everything and make a little bit everything look better in the end. If you're wondering if you should be getting the magnetic variable ND filters from Freewell or the non-magnetic variable ND filters, you should know that they both perform pretty similarly. This one with the magnetic filter actually has a little bit more of a color cast, more on the warmer side, where the non-magnetic ones don't have it as much. This is probably because there's also a CPL inside of this filter, so it just naturally makes the color a little bit more on the warmer side. But it's not a big huge thing to fix in the end in post-processing. They both have pretty similar vignettes. As you go higher to the limits of each of the filters, you get more vignettes in both of them. So I would say that both of them pretty much perform in the same way. But if you want to get a little bit less of a color cast, definitely go with the ones that are not magnetic. Now, do I recommend getting these filters? 
at only $400, I definitely think it's a great value for the price. You would have to easily pay $700 to $800 if you were getting all these filters individually. It is also really great because the quality of this glass is really good. Freewell says it's 18 coated, multi-layer, waterproof, dustproof, oilproof, and scratch resistant glass. And I can testify to that because I had the lenses in my pockets and it didn't scratch at all. Another really great thing is that the image quality is not too much affected with minimal uh, color cast and also pretty reasonable vignetting inside of the lens. So overall, it's a really great package for the price. What is even better is that they have a 25% off on the Kickstarter right now. So if you go get them right now, you're gonna have saved even more money. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting like the button below and also consider subscribing to the channel for more content on photography and filmmaking. My next video is gonna be about some ND filters, but for the phone this time. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.